Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel, welcome to another Gran Turismo 7 opinion piece. In the last one we took a look at group 1 and group 2 and how I would reclassify those, those groups to give us a little bit more variety and to make the BOP easier to balance. This time is going to be the turn of group 3, we currently have about 52 different cars in group 3 at the moment. The cars come from all sorts of forms of motorsport and eras, makes it nearly impossible for them to actually effectively BOP and because of that we only really see around about 7 or 8 cars on a regular basis in sport mode because many of them are just not that competitive. Now, this is what I would do with Group 3 in terms of splitting them up giving us more variety, making the BOP easier to do. It's not about talking about bringing other cars into the game, it's more about doing what you can do with what's already in the game. Of course, if they're bringing more cars into the game, more modern versions of some of the, the Group 3 cards, I'm all up for that, but this is about doing what we can with what's already in the game. And the first category and the first split I'm going to do is we're going to have a Group 3 Manufacturers class. So PD run the Manufacturers Championship for GTWS Gran Turismo World Series and yeah, I think there's 27 different representatives in that so I do understand they have a little bit of an issue where they actually have to have, you know, all these cars BOP'd efficiently for that. But it's a little bit unusual for GTWS or some of the manufacturers that some of them actually have more than one car and if you pick that manufacturer then you can actually use any of those cars. For example, I think Toyota's got three, Nissan's got four. Uh, Peugeot's got two, Ford's got four as well. I think that's a little bit unfair. I think for the Manufacturer Championship, one of the cars in particular should be selected, and that's what I've done here. So for any of the manufacturers that have got more than one car, the cars have been moved into a different category. Now there is, unfortunately, a few fairly old cars that you have to pick. For example, Aston Martin on the screen there, they have a fairly old Group 3 car at the moment. Of course, if they were to bring in more modern versions of any of the manufacturers, then they could then be slotted into Group 3 manufacturers, and the old version could then be moved into another category, of which we'll see in just a little bit of a minute. But yeah, you can see the selection of cars I would pick here. One thing you may well have noticed for Toyota, I moved the Group 3 Toyota Supra up into Group 2, and so Toyota's representative in Group 3 manufacturer would be the Toyota FT1. I would just rename that the Toyota Supra concept because I believe that's what the FT1 actually was. And yeah, it kind of fits in quite nicely and it's a pretty decent Group 3 car in its own right. But yeah, you can see what I would pick here. Uh, as I said, some of them are a little bit old and it would be nice to see you know, new Ferraris come in or the new McLaren come in and then the old Ferrari and the old McLaren could then be slotted in to the next group that we're about to take a look at and that is going to be Group 3 Legacy. So here we have, what, 11 cars here in Group 3 Legacy. These are kind of like the misfits, if you like. They're quite old, a lot of these cars, or they've been replaced by kind of other versions that come into the game. For example, the Nissan GTR from 2013, the old Audi R8. And uh, you've got some cars in there, maybe something like the BMW M3 could possibly have went into one of the categories we did in the last video, GTLM. Somebody did suggest that in the comments. You've got the old Lexus as well, the prototype Lexus. So they're kind of a little bit older, these cars, or they don't quite fit in, you know, like the Mazda 10s is more like a touring car, isn't it? Uh, but you know, it's a bit of a little bit of a misfit category, but it would be nice, you know, for something like, you know, get these cars all in the same category, group them up together, get a nice BOP on them, and then, you know, just when you don't want to kind of use the, the more Group 3 manufacturers, just gives a little bit more variety. And, you know, some of these cars are very nice to drive indeed, and uh, you just don't see them. So, you know, move them out the manufacturers kind of category, give them their own legacy category, and then we maybe start getting a reason to use these cars. But that's what I would do with the misfits of Group 3. Moving on to the next one, this is going to be a very small category. These cars just don't belong in Group 3 at all. We've got the Toyota Supra GT500 from 1997, the Nissan GTR GT500 from 1999, and we've got the Nissan Silhouette from 1984. Now, that doesn't really even fit in with the other two cars, but I think if you kind of just separated these three cars, give them their own little categories, possibly some more cars in the future are coming in, to the game that could fit in here as well. It just means that when Polyphony bring new cars into the game, if they were to kind of split up the categories in some kind of fashion in the way that I'm suggesting, both in like group one, group two, that we previously looked at, 
Group 3 that we're looking at at the moment, we'll look at Group 4 in the future. They will just have more options and where to put these cards in rather than just kind of just shoehorning them into one of the four groups of cars that they've got and if you know they're not competitive they, they literally just disappear within days and everybody forgets that they actually exist so this would be a small group hopefully more cars coming in the future moving on to our final group for group three this is going to be group three vision gran turismo we've got the volkswagen without the roof we've got the suzuki vgt we have the Peugeot VGT and we have the Mazda RX Stealth. Now that is considered a separate car compared to uh, the normal Mazda RX Vision. So yeah, make use of that. Why have the two of them in the same category when spot them up, give them some different characteristics. And I'll kind of flesh this one out by using some of the cars that you probably even knew existed in the game, like the Mercedes VGT, the Toyota FT1 VGT, the BMW VGT, the Lexus RCF VGT and the Nissan GTR VGT and kind of flesh these out, give this group a nice number of cars. You probably, as I said, don't even know these cars exist. Give people a reason to drive them, to use them. And uh, you could even kind of give this kind of category a kind of its own little niche where they're kind of all like fantasy cars. So we only drive these cars on fantasy tracks in the game. Now I do have the 4GT test car in there as well. I actually meant to put that in the legacy. So, but it could fit in here as well because it's, uh, it's, you know, why not? But it gives you an idea of what you could do and, uh, you know, introduce some of the cars in the game, as I said, that are just never used. I think this would be really nice as a group, you know, fantasy cards, fantasy track, more variety, get them BOP'd up nicely and, you know, variety is always a good thing in the game. But that's what I would do with Group 3, folks. I would take one category and I would split them up into four different ones and I would flesh some of them out with some of the Vision Gran Turismo cars that, as I said, I never knew some of them existing stuff started kind of delving in to Brand Central. And I think it would just give the game a whole lot more variety. It would be far easier for these to be BOP'd when new cars get dropped into the game. You'd have far more kind of apt kind of groups for the cars to be slotted into as well. And then in the future, they could be jigged about, you know, if the Ferrari, the new Ferrari 296 as it comes into the game, then the 458 goes into Legacy, the 296 goes into Manufacturers. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, folks. Not going to mess about too much with this one. This is my ideas. What do you think of them? Constructive criticism is always welcome on this channel thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one goodbye now